In this video we're going to cover a section of the DA100 exam called prepare the data. Specifically, get data from different sources. We're going to go through all the points that Microsoft outlined in the exam. Uh, use the timestamps down below if you want to skip ahead to the parts that you're interested in. And if you have any questions about anything that isn't covered in this video, let me know by leaving a comment down below and I'll answer you when I can. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. This video is part of my DA100 exam preparation series so if you haven't yet make sure you check out the previous one getting started in DA100 to get some background on the exam and see if this is the right exam for you. As a data analyst, you will be exposed to different kinds of data in different places. You might receive a sales report in Excel that you receive from your boss. You need to see what the performance is of each of your sales rep, but to get details about your sales rep, you need to get their personal data from a SQL database. Power BI gives you the ability to connect to these different sources and more, mash them up and deliver reports out of them quickly and easily. In order to start connecting to your data, you will need to use Power BI Desktop. If you haven't yet, make sure you download and install Power BI Desktop from the Power BI website. I'll leave a link in the description box below. When you download, just make sure you hit the advanced downloads options so you can download the normal 64-bit install file. Power BI currently supports different kinds of data sources from files on your local machine to databases and online services directly. We won't cover all of the sources since the principles are generally the same for all of them. The most common way you will get data is most likely through a flat file, either in Excel or CSV format. A flat file just means that it's row by row data, including its hierarchies ungrouped. In this CSV file here, we have a list of employees with some basic information like their name, country, and age. And it's just an example of how a flat file would look like maybe sent to you by email or maybe exported from a HR system. To import this data into Power BI is pretty simple. From Power BI Desktop, select Get Data, select Text or CSV. Let's look for Employees File and hit Open. Power BI will then open a window which shows you a preview of the data you're about to import. Typically, you'll need to do a bit of cleaning up to your source data or build some calculations to it before you load the data to your data set. You can do that by hitting the transform data, but for now, let's just load the data. Once your data is loaded, you will see that the employee's data are now available to use for reporting. You can see them on the field section just on the side there. The file can be located either on your local machine or a cloud storage location like Dropbox or OneDrive. Typically, you want to keep your data at a cloud location if you want your reports to refresh its data automatically. An online source means you're also going to be able to update the report data easily. Or maybe you want to keep the data locally in case you're not too familiar with securing your data from an online source. It all depends on your own requirements. Another common type of data source that you'll be connecting to is a SQL database. A SQL database is just a service that hosts and manages data. Data is organized as multiple tables related to each other. Each table is composed of columns and rows of data. With Power BI, you're able to get these tables and use them for your reports. Here I have a local SQL database, Solutions Abroad, that I created for this demonstration. If you do a quick select on the sales table here, you'll see that it has details on sales made, like products sold, what quantities they were sold in, etc. What we're missing are the employee details, who made these sales and from which country they are working at. What we do have though are their employee IDs that we can use as a reference to get those employees. If you remember, we have those details from a CSV file that we imported into Power BI already. So let's import this SQL table into our Power BI datasets as well, shall we? From Power BI Desktop, click Get Data, and this time select SQL Server. I'm going to put in my SQL Server details. This time it's just localhost. Once I hit Connect and hit OK, you'll see the sales table we want to import. Check the table and hit Load. 
Depending on the size of your data, this load process might take a long time. But once it's loaded, you will see that we now have the sales data and the employees data into the same data set. Let's create a quick relationship between the two. So go to the model view, drag the ID field on top of the employee ID that creates a relationship between them. Now, when we go back to the report view and bring in product quantity and price, you can now also bring in the employees details like name, their country, because Power BI knows that relationship between the two queries. You can easily create charts and visuals across them. Being able to connect to different kinds of sources and bring them all into one place is one of the great benefits of using Power RBI. You're able to mash up different kinds of data together and build interesting reports out of them. Importing data into Power BI Desktop creates a connection between your data source and your report. This means that if you update your Excel with some new numbers, the Power BI report can easily reflect those changes by hitting the refresh button. Imagine you received a new file of employees, new employees. This file has the same structure as your previous file, employees. It has the same column headers. The only difference are the row data. Maybe some of them have different ages now, or maybe you had some name changes. Instead of re-importing a new query into your dataset, you can simply change the data source settings in Power BI. Click Options, Data Source Settings. You'll see the two data sources we have, the CSV and the SQL database. Select the CSV and click Change Source. Under File Path, select Browse, and let's look for the new CSV file we want to use. When you hit OK, Power BI will ask you to apply changes to your query. This will reload the CSV data from the new source. And that's all you need to do in order to change the data source settings. Uh, this method is especially useful if you've already made a lot of visuals and calculations already. You just have to make sure that the format of the new data is the same as the previous one. Otherwise, you'll encounter some errors. When you bring in data into your Power BI desktop, you essentially create a local data set. The data set is what your Power BI report uses to visualize your data into graphs and charts. And this data set is a hidden part of your Power BI report. When you save the PBX file on your desktop, you only see one file, but when you eventually publish this report to the service, the web browser version of Power BI, you'll see that two items will be published, the reports and the data set. You can, like other sources, connect to a published data set in order to build out your report. Sharing data sets is a common way to reduce redundant work and ensure that data is controlled and refreshed in one place. Let's publish this report we have so far into the service. We'll cover publishing your reports at a later video but for now just pay attention to what's happening. Now that that's published, let's look at it from the service itself. You'll see that it publishes two items, the reports and the data set, as I said before. This data set that we have in the service can now be used as a data source for other reports we want to make. If we go back to Power BI Desktop and create a new report, select Get Data and this time select Power BI Datasets. You'll see that the data set we published is available now. Select it and hit create. Now we're sharing that data set and we're able to build reports on top of the data in it. What's great about sharing data sets is that any changes to the original data set will also be made to all other reports that are connected to it. This means you have a central place to control changes to the data and avoid issues like duplication of work or working in silos. This also means that every time the data set gets updated with new data, all of the reports that are sharing the same data set will also get updated. So it's a great way to control and manage your data sets in Power BI. Just bear in mind that sharing a data set means that changes to the data like transformations will need to be done to the original report. When you get data from your sources to Power BI Desktop, by default, you're using import as the storage mode. This means that your Power BI report creates a copy of your source data into the data set to make it easier for you to use the data for visualizations. Imported data sets also have the benefit of being able to use all the data transformation capabilities of of Power BI Desktop, like DAX or Power Query, which allows you to shape your data as you need. Import mode, however, has its setbacks. 
for example, a one gigabyte limit to this storage mode if you're publishing to the service. This makes it a little bit tricky to use for really large data sources. Another limitation is that if you need to build a live dashboard where the data needs to be refreshed every minute or every second, the import mode doesn't support that kind of refresh. In order to overcome these limitations, you can use the direct query mode. The direct query mode allows you to keep the data in its source instead of your report creating a copy into the dataset. Instead, the report simply sends a request back to the source and the source returns the result. By creating a direct query connection to your source, it means that you completely eliminate the one gigabyte limit because you don't import the data into the data set, letting you work with large amounts of data. The direct connection also allows you to create live reports where your data gets refreshed as soon as it gets updated from the data source itself. However, using the direct query method limits your ability to transform your data. So if you're thinking about transforming your data, make sure all of these are done on the data source side. Another limitation is that direct query mode is not available to use for all data source types, unlike the import mode. For example, you can connect to a SQL database using direct query mode, but you can't use it for data source types like Excel files. Dual mode is the kind of storage mode that can act as both import mode or direct query mode, depending on the context of what's being calculated or visualized. Dual mode is the kind of storage mode that can act as both import mode or direct query mode, depending on the context of what's being calculated or visualized. This mode is a great compromise if you want to be able to work with large amounts of data in direct query mode and at the same time work with imported data within the same data sets. You want to use import mode for daily reports and dashboards that can be refreshed a couple of times per day. If you need to work with big data where you have to process millions and millions of rows, you have to use direct query. If you're working with a report where the data needs to be updated frequently, like every minute or every second, direct query is the right storage mode for you. For example, if you need to build an on-screen dashboard that updates as soon as your employees make a sale. You want to use dual mode if you need to work with both direct query and import queries. Working with large amounts of data or creating lots of complicated calculations can sometimes affect your report's performance. And a slow report can really negatively impact your user's experience. So being able to identify performance issues and fix them is critical, uh, especially if you want your reports to perform on a certain standard. A query performance issue means that when you load your data sets to start working on the visuals, this process takes a long time to load, or maybe it takes so long that the process times out. Here are some of the common tips that I can give you to improve your query performance. Decrease the number of query steps on your transformations. Similar steps like change types, renaming, can be bundled into one step, decreasing the number of actions your query needs to perform. Second is to disable auto date time. This option is enabled by default in order to allow beginners to slice their data using individual date fields to their data without needing to do anything else. However, this means that the Power BI creates a hidden calendar beneath each of these fields in order to make this possible. And these date-time calendars can cause significant performance issues, especially if you have a lot of date fields. You can disable this from the Power BI settings. As a best practice, your dataset should have its own centralized calendar table where all the time-based calculations are made. I made a video on how to create your own calendar tables using DAX in Power BI, so check it out if you haven't yet. Next is to utilize the query folding technique if you're using a SQL database as your data source. Query folding essentially lets you push transformations that you do in Power Query back into the SQL source. This means that on your Power Query, your transformation step may look like it's being done in Power BI, but if you right click on the query and the view native query option is enabled, it means that the Power BI translated that step into SQL code and pushed that computation back to the source. However, if you're still having issues that can't be fixed by the tips that I said just before, uh, and you need to diagnose the steps one by one, you can use the query diagnostics, which can help you with just that. To start, let's hit transform data on our report to open Power Query. Let's add a couple of steps in our sales query so we have something to diagnose. 
Let's filter this by France. And let's change the format of this to be all capitals. Select the source step, then let's start the diagnostics. Click through each of the steps one by one to the very end, and then click stop. This generates a few results. Aggregated is like the summary version of the diagnostics. We'll look at this one. The detailed view goes through all the operations that happened behind the scenes. And partition is more to understand how your data is being partitioned. This is used more for data privacy stuff. You can do things like sort this table by exclusive duration, which can give you some ideas when doing some root cause analysis. Imagine having created an amazing sales data set in Power BI. You have a rich collection of calculations in the data set that meets your business needs. Now you want to be able to use this data in a different context. Maybe you want to be able to build apps on top of this data or maybe you want to utilize AI and data mining technologies to extract even more insights out of it. Microsoft Dataverse, formerly known as Common Data Service, provides a great platform to centralize your data. It enables your data to utilize the full capabilities of the Power Platform. You're able to use AI Builder to create sophisticated algorithms on your data. You're able to use Power Apps and build apps quickly and more. So let me show you how you can connect to a Dataverse. So here I've set up a Power App in Teams. I created a small table called Dataverse Sales. I want to bring this data into Power BI. What you want to do is go to About, click Session Details and copy the instance URL. Next, let's head over to Power BI Desktop, Get Data, select Power Platform and select Dataverse. Next, paste the instance URL and remove all of the HTTP stuff. For some reason, it doesn't work with it. When you hit OK, you will have access to all the data within the Power App. If you search for Dataverse, you will see that our table, Dataverse Sales, is available to be imported. Tick it and click Load Data. Now you have that data you can use for reporting in Power BI. Parameters gives you the ability to change the results of your queries or your custom functions dynamically. For example, maybe you have a lot of sales data from your SQL database and you don't want to load all this data into your report. You only want one region at a time and you want to be able to select and switch without having to recreate the report. From your Power BI report, hit Transform Data to open Power Query. From this view, you will see an option to manage parameters. Click Add Parameter. Let's create a parameter called Country. For now, let's leave the type as any and suggested values as any value. Let's set a current value to United Kingdom for now and hit OK. Now under Sales, let's add a new step to filter the rows by country. Click the gear icon on that step and instead of writing manually what this filter should do, let's pick the parameter we just made and hit OK. Let's also add the same filter to the employees table so we can control both using the same parameter. Click the employees table, filter by country, Click the gear icon and then select the country parameter. Now you'll see that both sales and employees table are filtered by United Kingdom, which is what we set by default. If we change the parameter to Australia, you'll see that both queries get filtered by the parameter. And that's just one of the ways you can use parameters in Power BI. If you lost it up to this point, congratulations, that pretty much covers this part of the DA100 exam. It's a lot of topics compressed in one video, so if you have any doubts or questions, let me know by leaving a comment in the section box below. Give this video a like if it helped you. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media the links that I included in the description box below and thank you so much for watching guys see you again on the next one